this time of year, we have lots of eggs coming in, lots of milk from our cow, vegetables coming in from the garden, and then so many other places that we can source beautiful ingredients, whether that's meat from a local farm, produce from the farmer's market. This week, I wanna show you how I'm using up all of those things and not letting anything go to waste. There is a lot that I want to get done today. I'm going to clean out this refrigerator, clean out my pantry and reorganize it, make lists of things that I need to use up. There are several things that are in abundance right now. And so I want to brainstorm and jot down ways that I can use them so that none of them go bad. I need to take inventory and see what additional items I need in order to make those things so that I can get all of these things in rotation and get ready with a plan for the week ahead. Sometimes this all happens in my head. Sometimes I put it to paper or the notes app on my phone, but this is my process for rotating things and making sure that we don't have really great foods go bad. We spend a lot of time here on our homestead caring for our cow, making sure the pasture is rotated, uh, stocking the barn with hay, moving the chicken tractor every single day, making sure they have fresh water. And the last thing I wanna do is take all of those things that we have worked so hard to implement with fencing and, and building this chicken tractor and building our flock and all of this, um, and then wasting it. That is not what I want to do. So we're gonna do all that. I'm starting today by making a pumpkin pie. We went to a pumpkin patch recently and the kids carved some pumpkins and then we also got a couple of pie pumpkins and cooked those and we cooked the pumpkin seeds too. I'm going to use up a good portion of that in a pumpkin pie. I like the ingredients that a pumpkin pie uses because it covers a lot of the things that we have an abundance of. Milk and cream, eggs, pumpkin. That will be the first step before actually cleaning out the fridge is just getting a few things out of there. Oh, also I forgot to mention that my daughter was in a pie baking contest. So we had a lot of practice rounds and we ended up with a bunch of extra pie crusts in the refrigerator. So this recipe covers all the bases for at least eliminating a few things before getting into the rest of it. I do have a from scratch pumpkin pie over on the blog. It has the directions for an einkorn pie crust, which we really enjoy. You can also use a sourdough pie crust. I have that on the blog. I don't even know what these were because we made so many of them. The pumpkin pie filling though is completely from scratch. So I revisit this every single year whenever it's pumpkin season. It is two cups of pumpkin puree. You can also use store-bought of course, but I use oftentimes a homemade puree in this. Three eggs, a cup of heavy cream, a teaspoon of vanilla, three quarters cup brown sugar, half teaspoon salt, teaspoon cinnamon, two teaspoons pumpkin pie spice, and then just put it in your homemade pie crust and bake it. We love making this recipe of course very seasonal i haven't done this since last september or october all right i want to take a quick break from my cooking to tell you about today's sponsor birch living birch mattresses are crafted with natural and organic materials that have been sustainably sourced I love that I don't have to worry about harmful off-gassing that happens in the conventional manufacturing process of mattresses. That's why we actually have three birch mattresses here. We have the queen size Lux, and then up in the boys' bedroom, we have two in the twin size. Unlike synthetic mattresses, the wool in these birch mattresses make it hypoallergenic. It's allergen and mildew resistant. The Birch Lux Natural Mattress is a premium upgrade to their original well-loved Birch Natural Mattress. It's comprised of eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic <coughs> cotton, and 100% natural latex, and it is super plush and comfortable, especially with the topper, which we also have on our queen size Lux. We spend a large portion of our lives asleep, so it makes sense for our health that we would choose something that doesn't have questionable ingredients. Now, the best part about all of this is Birch is delivered directly to your door. It comes very easy to set up. You just basically have to pull it out of the box and it expands. So you're sleeping on this luxurious natural organic mattress in no time. I'm confident that you will love Birch as much as us, but I know it can be scary to get something that you'd really prefer to try out. That's why Birch offers a 100 night sleep trial. You can be confident 
that you will love it for many years to come. It also has a 25 year warranty. So this isn't something that you're just gonna use for a year and then get rid of. It will be an investment for the long haul. I love my Birch mattress and I think that you will too. If you are looking for a new bed, check out Birch by using my link, birchliving.com forward slash farmhouse. It'll be linked below. You can also use the QR code here for 20% off your order plus two free eco rest pillows also ships free in the US. Again, thank you so much to Birch Living for sponsoring today's video. On to using up a few tomatoes and meat. We have an abundance of meat because I stocked my freezer with meats from my sister's farm. And then I have some sausage from fed from the farm until my sister's next pork harvest. So we got so much ground beef, ground pork. So a lot of my recipes are featuring that. I also am getting chicken from my sister, so we have plenty of that as well. So I'm brainstorming recipes that will use it up. One of our favorites that we just go to time and time again is chili. I know chili is a winter or you know colder season recipe, and it's not quite super cold yet, but we still use it because our kids love it. They eat it so easily. It's a fast food, and of course, it's gonna use up a lot of the things we have an abundance of. We planted way too many peppers this year, and I guess way too is relative because I'm probably gonna enjoy it this winter. We've been freeze drying lots of peppers. We also have eggplant and tomatoes and onions in abundance from the garden, so that's something I'm gonna put in the chili. We did do eggplant parmesan a couple times, but eggplant's really good sauteed and put into soups and chilies. Nobody seems to love eggplant, honestly, and I probably just need to think of some more good ways to use it, but you know, it's coming in hot and I need to do it, and so I have been putting it into chili. Now you're going to see that I pour it directly into the pot of chili, and that's because my mind was apparently somewhere else, and I forgot that the first time that I made this chili, I actually sauteed it first and that's how it tasted really good. Now this was fine, we still ate it, but for the second eggplant, I ended up sauteing it because I remembered and that is so much better whenever you first saute your peppers and onions and eggplant and some butter before putting it into the chili. So that's what I meant to do. Either way, we ate this entire thing half eggplant sauteed, releasing all of the delicious flavor, adding some salt, half of it just put in there and cooked down. Not the absolute best way to do it. You definitely want to saute everything first. Now for the chili, I'm doing a mixture of ground beef, sausage, I have just some canned black beans, fresh tomatoes, and then I also have a tomato sauce that I cooked down about a week ago. I didn't water bath can it, so sometimes I do this halfway canning thing where I cook something really, really hot. I don't add any additional acidic thing in order to make it safe for canning, but then when I put the lid on, because it's hot, it seals, so then I store it in the fridge for a short amount of time, but longer than I probably could if it hadn't sealed. So hopefully you're tracking with me here. That is not official recommended advice, but it is something that I personally feel comfortable with. That cooked down sauce gives the chili a more tomatoey flavor. It makes all of the flavors meld together a bit better since the tomatoes were cooked down than just adding fresh tomatoes. So I have a mixture of both. I have some sauce that I cooked with peppers and onions and tomatoes and simmered all day on the stove and blended and cooked down. I have some fresh tomatoes. I have some eggplant that I sauteed in butter and some peppers and I have some fresh eggplant that I didn't do that with. Anyways, it's a whole big pot of goodness with a bunch of chili powder, salt, cumin, some noodles. It was delicious. We ate it all and it used up a lot of the things that I had too much of. Also, the chili toppings. We have lots of cheese. Whenever I went into a major cheese making frenzy earlier this spring, we are using that cheese. And then also I bought in bulk some sour cream from Azure Standard that's going bad. And so I, I want to use that up too. Lots of things used up in this wonderful dish. Okay, now it's time to tackle the pantry, tackle the fridge, make some lists, see what I have. This has to happen on occasion. One thing I noticed in that pantry was some candy from the parade we went to recently in town. 
I'm just going to put that directly in the trash. Hopefully none of my kids are watching this. I let my kids do all the things like at parades, grab all the candy. They eat candy. They really care about it for a day or so. And then they forget all about it. I put it up in the pantry. They forget. And so now I can throw it away. Nobody's going to ask me about it. I don't know how some of you are going to feel about that. I might get bad comments. I don't know. And it, it might just be exactly what you do too. We shall see. I also discovered that my trash can was a little yucky. So this is whenever your mind kind of goes in different directions when you're homemaking. Like, ooh, let me throw this away. Oh, got to clean the trash can. Back to the pantry organization. I have to revisit things like my pantry, like my fridge all the time because I'm always adding new stuff into it without being mindful of where everything goes. So in this rendition of organizing the pantry, I'm putting all of my bread flours that I've stocked up on together, all of the all-purpose flour, putting the sweet stuff in the top cabinet like granolas, chocolate chips, cane sugar. Then I have a spot for pasta and miscellaneous flours and grains that don't fit into the category of bread flour all purpose. I am not 100% always the most organized person. I go through my day very fast and then I have to go back and bring it all together at some other point. That's probably not necessarily the best way to do it, but that is typically the pattern that I fall into. It actually works very well as long as I'm diligent to do these big cleanouts and lists every once in a while to make sure that I don't have anything that's going to go bad or expire. Now I'm making a few lists. One is things that I need. I want this list to stay pretty small because the whole goal of this particular clean out is to use up things that we have an abundance of from the farm or that I've stocked up on. So I'm going to only put things on the need list that will round out the recipes that I will have on the other list. So the second list is use up and then the third list is to make. So as I clean out the fridge and as I clean out the pantry, I'm adding to this list. I'm finding more and more things that I need to use up and then I'm thinking of more ideas as I th see things and jotting down more ideas to make. Now these won't all happen in the next week, but they give me a good list of ideas to visit whenever in the up upcoming weeks we continue to have an abundance of things. A couple of my first tasks in the fridge is to combine milks from dates that are the same. So if I have two jars that are labeled the 23rd, but they're both halfway full, I will combine those. I'm also hard boiling some eggs to keep those readily available for snacks. I have some kids who really like hard boiled eggs, so it's a quick thing to give them. Next, I'm going to go back in the fridge. I have a whole bunch of things that are hanging out in Ziploc bags from the last week or two. Lots of things that I can use up and reinvent in a new way. This is one of my top strategies. When looking in the fridge, I have a few things that you can really throw together just about anything. So one example is a strata. Right now I have a half of a rosemary garlic brioche that we didn't end up using the rest of. And then a couple of brioche rolls that I had used for sandwiches and we didn't finish those. But what are you going to do with a couple random broken up rolls? That's why I'm going to make a strata. Some more examples are quiches. You can throw just about any veggies in those. Soups, chilies, skillet dinners. You can throw a bunch of leftovers in a skillet topped with cheese. I love having a whole arsenal of things that can reinvent little bits and pieces of things in the fridge because I don't like throwing anything away. So let's talk about this Strata recipe and then we'll talk about more things that are on the use up list and how I intend to use them. The printable version is over on the blog, but I am taking leftover bread products, toasting them in the oven until they are nice and toasty. Meanwhile, I'm mixing up 10 eggs, three cups milk, three quarter teaspoon salt, ground black pepper, and then some herbs. I'm just doing sage and thyme because that's what I currently have in my garden. Meanwhile, I am browning up a pound of sausage with one onion diced. And then I'm just gonna add a cup and a half of cheese. 
I have my homemade Gouda with crushed red pepper flakes. I'm also gonna do half regular Gouda so that way it's not too spicy. To the toasted bread, the cooked sausage. Let the bread soak up in the egg and milk and herby salty mixture. Combine it all in a big dish and bake it. This was a huge hit with our family. You might not have any random leftover garlic rosemary brioche, but you should make it for this. I don't know why I never thought to make it just for this because that was so, so delicious. The sourdough brioche recipe is on my blog. I do not have the rosemary garlic version there, but you can find it in my recent video that I published on September 15th, 2023. It really does add a ton of flavor. Now I like to use my immersion blender instead of whisking. It just makes it a lot easier. That's just for the eggs and the milk. And this thing comes together fast and easy, perfect way to use up leftovers. A few more examples of things on my use up list, eggs, milk, garden veggies, so peppers, eggplants, herbs, onions. I wrote down flour and wheat berries just because I have a lot. I don't really feel that I need to use them up because they last for so long, but they're really great things to round out. Like if I make a chili, for example, it'd be really great to make bread with that. Or if I decide to make a quiche, having the flour on my use up list will be helpful for crust, which makes quiche taste a lot better. I also wrote sauerkraut on there because I have some that I fermented a while ago that is definitely looking like it needs to get used up. Beef, pork, those are just examples of things that I have plenty of to put in these recipes. Pie crust, so from the baking contest, we have lots of pie crust. Jam, I have some jam in there that, you know, once you open jam, you can only keep it so long. Apples, pumpkins, and then leftover bread and rolls, which I already showed you that I took care of. Still quite a few more pie crusts in there. And then I have on my to make list, just several ideas that I thought of very quickly. All right, let's talk about what's going on with this fried chicken before we go into the rest of my recipe ideas for using some things up. We make this all the time because whenever I have bread that's going bad, I make it into sourdough breadcrumbs by cutting it up, toasting it, and then blending it. And then I mix it with a little bit of salt, dip the chicken breasts. I actually usually cut the chicken breasts in half to make them thinner, dip them in some eggs. So again, another good way to use up eggs. We got plenty of those. And then into the breadcrumb mixture, and then I fry it in either tallow, lard, or coconut oil. Today, all we have is coconut oil, I'll be getting another big tub of lard from the butcher in October, but this is what I have for now. And then we also love to serve fried chicken with a onion cream gravy or an onion cream gravy. I just saute onions in some butter, add a little bit of flour to thicken it up, milk, cook it until it's nice and thick, add some salt and pepper to taste and then blend it up. Really great with mashed potatoes, especially when you do a plate with some mashed potatoes, a little bit of that fried chicken on top, and then some onion gravy. Some more things that are on my quick list of things to make. Quiche. Pizza is great because it uses up homemade mozzarella. Ricotta is something that I need to make from making the homemade mozzarella. Both of these really great to use up a lot of milk. French toast obviously uses up tons of milk and eggs. Cornbread, soup to use up a half gallon of bone broth I have in the fridge. Sausage, apple, kraut, potato skillet is great to use up the kraut. Toast and English muffins, great for jam. I love making English muffins, but I forget about them. I have them for a long time. I'll make them all the time and then I forget they exist for a while. Deviled eggs, that's just a fast way to get kids to eat hard boiled eggs. Fermented peppers, stuffed peppers, um, other than freeze drying, we do a lot of fermented peppers to keep those for the winter. And then stuffed peppers is a great way to use them up right now. Pumpkin pie already did that and strata. So pulling from that list and adding a little something to it, I'm going to make a chicken soup with a sourdough noodle. These sourdough noodles are easy because I'm not gonna use any of the equipment to cut it. I'm just gonna roll them out and cut them. Quick way to use up some eggs, but then also that bone broth. These noodles are a brand new recipe to the Farmhouse on Boom blog. I've had sourdough pasta on there for a while, but these specifically for soup are an easy way to jazz up soup, make it a little bit more filling. I really like to make dumplings or some kind of bread or something with soup, a noodle that makes it 
more filling, go a little bit longer and stick with you. Soup's great, but it fills you up really fast. And then sometimes my kids are hungry again shortly. So this one, I'm doing a half a cup of sourdough starter. It can be discard or fed. You can long ferment this, or you can just make it really fast. It's the same ingredients either way. It's just a matter of if you're going to mix it all up, let it sit out and ferment for 12 hours, then pop it in the fridge for tomorrow, or just quickly do it. If you're looking for the benefits of long fermentation on grains, easier to digest and all of that, then you'll, you're going to want to let it sit out. So it's a half a cup of sourdough starter, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You can also use whole grain flour, two eggs and three quarters teaspoon salt. Now, if you want to do einkorn, usually I need to do a little bit less liquid when I'm doing einkorn. So you might just have to add a bit more flour or a little bit less of the sourdough starter. That's typically how I adjust that. Dust the countertop with a bit of flour, roll the noodle dough out as thin as you can, and then cut it as straight as you can. It doesn't really matter how straight it is. It's just the aesthetics. I have some leftover chicken in the fridge for making a whole chicken a few days ago. So getting that out of the fridge too is another way that I'm going to completely get this refrigerator clean. Now you might have noticed that this video takes place over a few days. Obviously we didn't eat all of this food in one day. So I'm finally going to, now that I've gotten all of the big quick wins out of this fridge, leftovers, little bits of bread, some eggs, combined a few milk jars, and then reorganize some things. Give this a thorough wipe and have a clean fridge for the next week. Now, again, I'll have to do this in about a month, but I love these resets every so often. For milk that is about a week old, I like to make that into yogurt and or milk kefir. A great way to make it last longer. We typically like to use the milk for fresh drinking within the week. Yes, I did just put my vacuum inside this drawer. I didn't want to get the vacuum with the hose out and this one was just sitting right here. So whatever it takes to get the job done, at some point I will restock groceries, but it is a fun game for me to go as long as possible and use up as many things. So that way my fridge can be empty and clean before filled with anything new. When we were renovating this kitchen, the only place we brainstormed a ton on where to put everything that we could put the fridge was in a very tight spot against the door. When we first moved in, it was sitting where the hutch with the dishes is, which definitely felt like not a good place for traffic patterns. But this means that I can't fully open the left door and pull out the left drawer or the bottom drawer. So it does make cleaning a bit of a challenge to get done. But man, does it feel good to do so. After getting it all clean, I add to my 9x13 dish some meat for thawing. I love to use up what's in there, but then keep it stocked with thawed out meat. That way a meal is never more than 30 minutes away. It's one of my top fast food, homemade fast food strategies. A good way to avoid takeout is to have meat thawed out so you can always make something fast. Now, one of my favorite things for that, whether it's breakfast or even the other day we made this for dinner is biscuits and gravy. So in the morning, we're gonna make biscuits and gravy because I don't wanna wake up early. I'm gonna get the biscuit dough going tonight. This is my sourdough biscuit recipe. Of course, printable on the FOB blog, but for today, it's two cups of all-purpose flour, a tablespoon of sugar, three quarter teaspoon salt, two teaspoons baking powder, teaspoon baking soda. Mix that together, then add in eight tablespoons of cold butter cut into chunks, a cup of sourdough starter. You can use discard or fed and then a half a cup of milk or buttermilk. Now you can let this sit for several days in the fridge, do a little fermenting action, let it sit out a little bit first, then put it in the fridge if you want some more of those long fermented benefits. I am putting it in the fridge so that I have a quick meal in the morning. I also do have sausage thawed out. So in the morning, I brown sausage and then add a little bit of flour into the sausage grease, let that soak up a bit and then add milk, cook it until it's nice and thick. I don't measure anything, but it always does turn out great. Everybody in my family loves a sausage gravy. I salt and pepper to taste. Very similar to the onion gravy from earlier. Gravies are just good on things. People like it. I'm doing two pounds of sausage, 
So that way we have plenty. We could even maybe have it left over. Probably not because everybody really loves this. We do have this for dinner sometimes too. I'll just serve it with some scrambled eggs with sauteed onions and everybody's pleased with it. It's a very quick meal if you already have the biscuit dough made. Now if you don't, still pretty quick and loved by all. Now I have several more recipes and ideas still to work through with what is coming from the farm plus a few additions. I won't need to get any groceries for a while. I love having everything stocked up, but then I also really like working through it and doing everything fresh. I want to quickly point out a way to get biscuits extra flaky. That is just to roll the dough out, fold it over itself, roll it out again, and keep creating those folds. Another trick is to not twist your biscuit cutter. Just press it down, pull it up. That helps also to create the flaky layers during baking. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed going along with me as I cook through my week, use up some things, organize some things, and refresh and reset this kitchen. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I create videos like this. Also homemaking inspiration. I have a video coming out next week. It's making so many new things for our farmhouse. I'd love to invite you in to see what all is going on and hopefully inspire you to create some beauty in your own home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.